can you imagine every week going into the hospital and you see people coming out after getting the good news and the photograph and I was going in to, to see if my baby had died. Back in 2009, I um, was pregnant with my second child, a much wanted second child. A few months into the pregnancy, I felt that something was wrong, that something was different. You were only given a, your first ultrasound scan at 19 weeks and I found out at that scan that my child had, um, he had a lot of things wrong with him. There wasn't one thing in particular, but that he was um, inca incompatible with life, basically. This had been five weeks nearly to the day of when they had told me, and I hadn't seen one doctor. I hadn't had one phone call from the hospital. I had had no support from, from my medical system, my country. Women are having to, like criminals, go to the UK and um, travel home a lot of the times with the remains of their babies in suitcases or they are the remains of their babies are being sent home um, by a courier because i was 19 weeks it was going to be like 1600 pound sterling and on top of that we would have to have flights accommodation at 21 weeks gestation the price was going to rise again so that left me with a window of two weeks to make a decision. We had just bought a new house and we had spent all our savings. Can you imagine every week going into the hospital and you see people coming out after getting the good news and the photograph and I was going in to, to see if my baby had died. This whole uh, Eighth Amendment has, has, has stopped me being able to grieve for my son because I have too much anger even to grieve. But if the vote, if the Eighth Amendment was repealed and I knew that other women weren't going through what I went through, I think I could finally grieve properly for my son and move forward. This is what I just don't understand. We're all here because of our mothers. And Ireland is treating its mothers so bad, so bad.